All right, so we're back here now with a little bit of outside work, just a single little job. I worked on the black guitar. This is a Martin uh, DLPH or some damn thing like that. It's a DCPA5 black, which means it's essentially the body is a composite plastic. Um, plays pretty good. It sounds pretty good, but it's not a real expensive Martin guitar. I put a, deca uh, so a water slide on here and it's not sticking worth a damn. So I got to take that off and then I uh, lowered the action a little bit on this and I went down too far. I'm getting a little bit of buzzing on the high E string and stuff. So what I'm going to do is put a shim in under here. I'm going to loosen the strings and then I'm going to replace the, uh, the string holders there with uh, tusk saddle pins, you know, bridge pins. Um, this is a different material and it's supposed to make it sound better and play better. So I got to cut a shim and I may use this plastic material to cut the shim out of because it won't shrink or warp or do any of that stuff and get wet and funny and it should give me what I need just to raise the height up of the string just a little bit. I'm a little too low on this side, just in too low. Um, so I'm going to fix that today and that's what we're up to. So the first thing I got to do is just back the tension off the strings and loosen these up. These are um, uh, automatic tuners, you know, that clip the string off. Um, so I'm just going to back them off. I'm not going to take the strings out because trying to get them back in again of these things is a wicked pain in the neck. It would mean replacing the strings. And these are brand new. And I kind of like the blues. I'm going to go with them for a while and see how I like it in the long run. Um, so that's job one and a half. I'm going to remove, uh, maybe we can just do it right now. I might just peel right the hell off. And it did. So that was simple, huh? <laughs> so removing a water slide decal, I think it's because of the, the composite material, AKA plastic that they make this out of, that it didn't stick very well. Uh, it sticks to uh, um, a finish very well. You know that I've done that Use these on um, other guitars and ukuleles and had no problem at all. But what I got now is a handful of garbage. So I was trying to do it uh, as a dedication to my wife, uh, Patty, because um, she really likes the hummingbird. So that didn't work out too well. So I've got to clean up this spot with a little bit of water, nothing spectacular, and just wipe it down. And then that'll be cleaned up. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to do anything else on the body. I got the, the fretboard the way I like it with the rows and stuff. Um, and I think sometimes you just got to suck it up and move on. So that's what we'll do. Okay? Be back in a second. All right, I'm back. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to clean up this area on the body. You can see there's some leftover debris from where the uh, water slide was. Uh, and what I did is just wet a, a cloth here, and I'm just going to wipe it down. And I think that'll remove any of the stuff there. You don't have to worry about doing any water damage to the uh, DPL, DCPA5 body, because it's not wood or anything, and it's not a, a finish. It's just uh, plastic. I didn't really realize that when I bought the guitar. I thought I was buying a, some kind of a wooden laminate. I misunderstood what I read, and I think I paid about six hundred, five and a half for this guitar. It's one of my better guitars. It plays really well. Don't get me wrong, but I thought I was getting a real wooden Martin guitar, and as it turns out, I got a DCPL laminate guitar, which wasn't exactly the same as what I was looking for. Um, but I couldn't really afford, or I didn't want to afford, to go any higher up on the price scale, because you start getting into Martins, um, the prices skyrocket. You know, they're very expensive, because uh, they're made in the USA, and the labor is real expensive, and they make a, <laughs> hell, they make a great guitar, what are you going to say, you know? And they charge you for it. So there's no getting around that. A lot of companies go overseas and have China-made guitars, uh, and that's how they get their prices down. Uh, the workmanship is gotten a lot better with China-made guitars, so there's nothing wrong with that either. And I own a bunch of them um, from different manufacturers. 
everybody's trying to do their own cute stuff. So that's that on that end of the body, and that's all cleaned up, and that all, all went away nice. So there's no leftover from that attempt at um, trying to use that water slide decal. It just didn't work. Um, but you never know about how things are going to work until you try them. Sometimes failure is success. So I'm just going to back off all the tension on these strings, and I'm not going to loosen them up in the back. I'm going to make sure they're wicked tight because I don't want to lose my grip. Self-locking is what they call those. I didn't think of it for a minute. So we'll back that off. We'll back these off until we get all the strings loose as hell. And then we'll pull out the uh, saddle down below there. And then we'll measure and cut a shim to go underneath the saddle and raise the strings up all the way across on the bottom. I think that's the easiest way I can fix that um, the low string thing. Uh, I did make an adjustment to the um, truss rod and straighten the um, straighten the neck out a bit. All right, so let's loosen this off very far. All right, so we got a lot of slack now in all the strings. The loosey goosey. So the next, oh, and I did put a. Um, a zero glide nut in this some time ago um, when I did the original workup. So let's pop the pins because we're going to do some work down on this end um, and replace the bridge pins as well as add a shim. So we're going to do a couple of things down here. Um, all right, so we got the light on down there now. We'll get a little bit better view so we can pop these this is a surgical instrument I used to do some stuff with um, it makes a real good pin popper no heavy lifting does it easy so we'll get these all out and then we're going to measure for a shim Okay, we've got this out. We'll get this out. We'll try to get this out. There it comes. Okay. And I just got to remember which way I took this out. <laughs> and I think what I'll do is take a magic marker, even though this is black. I think if I make a black spot on here, it'll show me the front edge. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So we don't have to worry about uh, putting this back in the wrong way. And since it's black, the black won't show up any worse or better than the other. And I'll be able to put this back where I got it. In the condition I got it. Okay. So we'll let that cool down in the heat of the, heat of the day. And we'll take these pins out, get them out of the way. And I could use this, but I think that's a little too thick. Um, I like the idea of using this plastic. It appeals to me. So let me see if I can cut this out in some kind of a straight, easy fashion and make a shim out of it. down there. Measure the cut. It's a little bit too long. So we'll just take that and then we'll make a cut. It's a hell of an idea if it works. I think I'll give me a, a raise for ingenuity. All right. Is that going to fit? No, it's still too thick. I slide that in there and may never get it out again. 
Huh. So let's see if we can find the shim we just made and uh, make it skinnier. One end is not bad. Uh, it's still a little too fat all the way around. If I could lay it in there, then I might be able to just pop it down and get it to stay. You know what I mean? I could get one side and now it's still too thick. I think, although it doesn't want to come out. If it doesn't want to come out, then maybe it'll just stay in there the way it, it was planned. it sideways because it's too fat. It doesn't fit in the hole right. All right, so we've got to go back to the drawing board and take the edge of that plastic right out of there. Get that sliver out. Um, let's see if that'll fit any better. going sideways because it doesn't really fit well. If I get the thing in there to lay flat, I'd be happy. But I think I'm still too fat with the piece. You know what I mean? So what if I lay that down and then try to smother it in there? Is that going to work? very well, huh? No, it's still too fat. Maybe I'll try the white stuff. You know, I got a cutter. I think uh, that's going to make it, I don't know, let me go, I got a, a cutter. I'm going to get a, a paper cutter. All right, I got a paper cutter. And what I can do with this is line it up and cut off a straight edge. That gives me one straight edge. Now I got to figure out how big I want this to be and I can cut off a straight strip to go down the hole to go down in the slot well that stunk let's try to go bigger and see how that works take one whack now it's split actually it might be a good thing uh, because now I can um, put down a couple of strips in the hole instead of one fat piece. Hmm. All right, so we've got to measure, see how big we want this to be. Here's my black side. Here's my black side. So if we take this like that, and then we take our scissors and cut this off just a little short of that size. We should have our shims. All right. So let's try that and see what happens. See if we can work a miracle. Yeah. Bring you back over where you were. Peeking in the side. See if we can see this together, if this is going to work. So I got two pieces of paper that I think are cut close to the right size. <laughs> if this works, it'll be another miracle on 34th Street. Now let's turn it sideways. It's still too fat. Um,
Well, that's in there. And it's wobbling around like it's kind of working. So, I think we'll try that and see how it goes. Alright, so now we got to get the new pins. And we'll put the strings back in with the new... With the new pins. And see how this marvelous plan works. You never know until you know. Oh, they fit nice. Oh, yeah, great idea, though. I mean, you've got to put the right string on the right hole. I missed. I started with the fifth string in the sixth hole. We're very close, though. Very close. Start over again. We'll pop this out with the new deluxe popper. We'll move this over one hole. And start in again. That worked good. Now we'll take the sixth string and put it down the sixth hole and try to put this back together. That's a tight fit because it's a fat string. Gotta get the right string in the right slot. Let's see how that works. And then we'll get the high E string, put that in its favorite little groove, put that one up, put that one up. Everybody's in its right place now. And we got the black tusk pins in. All right, so now the next thing we've got to do is try to uh, tighten up the strings and see how that all works out. So we'll move up to the head here and uh, widen the shot out maybe and see what happens. I gotta fix this other string. I don't think it's hitting. Oy vey. Alright, so let's get this going. Quit getting around. Why is that sticking out like that? Because it didn't break off right, that's why. See, that's supposed to have broken off. It's coming around for the second time through the cutter. There it goes. Alright, now we'll just get it tuned up to a pitch and see what happens. Okay? So hang on one second and we'll tune. All right, now we're in the neighborhood. Did we lose our buzz? My God, I think we did. We may have fixed it. Okay, that's good. All right, let me finish tuning okay, up. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got everything done. We've got this one little piece back here sticking up a little high, but it's staying okay. I'm not going to mess with it again. Um, the height is just a little... I think I have the string bound a bit here, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. We're all set. Good enough. Good enough. So we could take this over and give it a play just to see how it's doing and call it a finished video. All right. All right. So let's call this the Martin completion type video. Uh, what we did is replace the uh, the pins, and we put a shim in here to raise up these lower strings because I was getting a buzz. 
because I originally had, had cut this down a little bit too low. test drive. It's playing pretty good now. So we fixed that up, a simple little job, just an adjustment. We changed the uh, back to these tusks uh, and it kind of goes along better with the black motif. Anyway, so that's good. So we're done with that. I'm happy the way that comes out and the way it sounded. So that's the Martin plastic guitar. <laughs> 